Hey folks, Sonny Kahara here with Campaigns and Elections. I'm joined today by Josh Justice, uh, CEO of Peerly. Peerly is a nonpartisan software provider and an industry leader in P2P technology and true HD video texting. Uh, Josh, thanks for being here today. Absolutely, thanks a lot for having me. Anytime, anytime. So, you know, uh, just to kind of get things started, uh, tell me how has peer-to-peer um, -peer texting evolved throughout the 2022 cycle? Yeah, look, it's a good question. I mean, um, if we go back to even 2020, when we really see in the, uh, the large initial explosion in the, the wide uptick with peer-to-peer -peer texting amongst uh, campaigns, um, in those days, it was uh, very dominated with just uh, pretty standard SMS texting, uh, of course, with the back and forth two-way messaging component. Uh, now, just a couple of years later, um, I mean, of course, we're seeing um, custom uh, custom fonts that we've uh, that we've introduced, as well as True HD video texting. We've introduced. We're seeing a much wider um, uptick on this technology, and the best part about it is we're not seeing um, we're not seeing the open rates or the engagement rates falling, despite the fact that there are so many more messages that are uh, that are being uh, sent out at this point in time. I mean. Uh, in 2020, Peerly probably did somewhere around a billion messages. 2022, we're expected to do uh, probably just over 3 billion. And of course, we do have detailed tracking analytics uh, built into all of our campaigns. And we're still seeing that high 90s response rate. So I'm not seeing anything in terms of peer-to-peer -peer slowing down. And if anything, with these additional innovations, we're seeing it continuing to uh, continue to grow out there. And it's, it's, been, a, it's been a major tool in, in this cycle, I'll tell you that. Got it. And also, so how is uh, P2P texting being used differently in 2022 compared to 2020? Yeah, so um, as, as I kind of mentioned in 2020, um, it was much more of probably a, a static form of communication, except for we did have that ability to, to text back and forth. Um, I would say one major difference is, is that um, back in 2020, we used to think we don't send text from a typewriter so why should messages look like it and that's essentially what uh, what they are standard text protocol uh, dictates the fonts that people uh, people see so we we started working on an interesting technology that allowed us to uh, display custom fonts directly in your text message really making those messages pop and stand out so that was one of the innovations that we've brought uh, brought to the market since that 2020 uh, that was uh, late 2021 that we introduced that and then, of course, the ability to send HD video has been a major game changer that we've seen out there. Also, the ability to really get in and track the open rates and have detailed analytics on what's happening with your message when it leaves the Peerly platform has been a big difference between now and in 2020 as well. Yeah, it definitely makes sense, especially, you know, when you consider how important the open rates and engagement analytics are nowadays, even in other kind of parts of campaigning. And, you know, you also briefly mentioned uh, video texting. I wanted to ask you about that next. So uh, video has been massive this cycle. Uh, and, you know, it's a relatively new approach in this space. Uh, and I know Peerly launched uh, HD video MMS texting this cycle. Uh, how have campaigns been using this new technology? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, HD video texting, um, uh, the thing with that was in, um, in 2020, the, the pandemic started this moment, uh, like mo momentum um, of, uh, of people cutting cords uh, throughout, uh, you know, uh, throughout, you know, the country. We noticed that there was a huge, um, huge shift in consumer behavior. And as we started looking and seeing that there's this record breaking cord cutting happening in various jurisdictions, we started thinking about this potential upcoming market shift. And that's when we thought, well, text messaging really needs to be used to send you know, rich video. And at that point in time, the problem with using MMS technology to send video is it often resulted in a much smaller, compressed or grainy um, video experience for the user. So we set out to actually introduce a full HD video texting. And when I say full HD, I don't mean as a buzz or marketing word. I mean, 1920 by 1080p messaging, the way that it's produced in. And we were able to accomplish this and we were able to introduce this in, uh, in early, mid uh, 2022. Since then, we've noticed a, a major uptick in this technology, and we're out, we've also um, been able to actually uh, see a lot of ad dollars coming over from standard linear uh, television, linear commercial, over into texting as well. 
So I would say so far, that's probably the largest innovation that's taken place uh, this year or that's taken place in texting. And of course, there are the ability, there is the ability to send texting, um, you know, with video. The difference is, is in that true HD format. That is the, uh, that, that's the big difference out there. Campaigns can spend anywhere from $1,000, uh, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars producing one of these commercials. If they send it over a text message and if it's grainy or if it's small or if it's compressed, it loses everything. It's just simply not worth it. And that's why there's this mad rush over to streaming and a mad rush away from linear cable looking for uh, ways to reach those key demographics. But with our True HD video texting, we've been able to now provide the ability for them to reach those key demographics directly and to track who's opening, how long they're listening, how long they're looking, um, all directly from the platform. So it's been, uh, it's been an innovation that's been in the works now for, uh, for, for a couple of years, and we're quite proud of it. And we are excited to see it being used so broadly right now. Awesome. All right. And I know we've been talking about kind of uh, new advancements and capabilities. Let's kind of flip it over to the other side, you know, for a moment. So I know in the past we saw uh, disruptions from telecom carriers uh, that affected tech spenders, uh, specifically in 2020. Uh, are you seeing any challenges in the political texting market heading towards uh, the last few weeks of the election? Yeah, actually, you know, last time I was uh, last time I was on with you guys, we talked a lot about that back in 2020. Uh, of course, there was some major disruptions in 2020 that uh, that took down a number of vendors. This is public knowledge. You know, it's uh, it, it was all over the news at that time. And I have to say, yes, there is issues that are happening now. However, that's not unique. We see issues happening uh, at this period of time in campaigns when we're talking about vendors or we're talking about carriers in, in almost every election. There is a tremendous amount of traffic that are going over networks right now. So because of that, we will see some issues. Now, in 2020, Peerly did not have an issue. Peerly has no issues now. The big difference is, is that uh, we really rely on what we'd call vendor diversity. We don't rely on a single uh, single point of failure. Uh, instead, we've actually been in telecom for close to 17 years, and we use those relationships to really build up our aggregators. So if there is an issue, we are able to quickly move over to a fail safe. And if there's an issue there, another fail safe and another fail safe. And we're pretty distinct in the market that way. Um, because of that, we haven't had any major issues, but the industry itself is not without issues right now. Another great example, and it's something you probably don't even think about, and that is caller identifications. You know, when you, you know, uh, a lot of the people that are listening right now will, will, will understand if they're doing texting. When you're sending out peer-to-peer -peer texting, you need localization. That's the power of this tool. If we're sending a message into Arizona, we want an Arizona caller ID. But guess what? There's only so many provisionable Arizona caller IDs. So what's happening right now is that caller IDs for key battleground states are sold out. You can't get them, which means that if an individual wants to send a message into the, one of these key states, they have to do so with a different area code, which negates the concept of the localization with peer-to-peer -peer texting. Purely about 15 months ago, started pre-provisioning. We understood what was going to happen and we started pre-provisioning these phone numbers. So as far as I know, right now, we're probably the only guys out there that do have access to all caller IDs uh, for, for all of the key states out there. And um, of course, you know, this is a little bit of um, uh, a little bit of behind the scenes, but that is it is it is something that's happening behind the scenes right now. It happens every time. You have to think ahead and you have to be prepared to pre-provision millions upon millions of caller IDs. But um, by doing so, we can make sure that localization for text messaging uh, is, um, is in place and that our clients are getting the complete value of the peer-to-peer the, the -peer texting experience. Got it. And Josh, you know, we've discussed uh, the kind of current ongoings uh, in the space, but tell me what's next for peer-to-peer -peer texting? Yeah, look, it's a good question. And you know what, in just a couple of years, the technology's moved, uh, moved a long way, right? I mean, we kind of went from static SMS to now people sending like true cinematic quality video over text messaging. That's a pretty big deal. Um, I can tell you right now that we have about half a dozen innovations in the pipeline right now. We'll be rolling them out in 2023. Um, on top of that, I'm going to make a prediction right now. The prediction is come time for 2024. 
I believe that HD video texting is going to be as prevalent, if not as, um, as prevalent, if not more prevalent than linear cable and linear cable um, advertising, which means we are seeing the floodgates open in terms of the monumental shift of dollars moving out of our, our old school um, you know, markets into these new technologies and the ability to be able to have an open rate of 95, 96, 97% on your video and track it is something that linear cable has never been able to offer. And it's without the distractions of streaming platforms. So that's my prediction. All right, thank you, Josh. And uh, for my final question, uh, if people want to find out more uh, about Peerly and about P2P, uh, where should they go? Absolutely, you can just go right to purely.com. And on top of that, we actually have the ability to test all of these products as well. You can just type in your phone number um, in any of our pages and we'll actually send you an automatic HD video text. You can text back and forth with our team. We back up our technology by using it. So come to our website and send us a text and we'll show you what we can do. All right, big thanks to Josh uh, for joining us today for the interview. And of course, bigger thank you to uh, Peerly for sponsoring today's interview. Thank you guys and hope to see you again. Thanks again, everybody.